Niger and let me go and see what I can, let me make something better for myself out there. Our guests today, uh, I'll leave them to introduce themselves. I'm Faith. My name is Deva Mom. Hello. <laughs> <Just my dear. laughs> and my name is Josiah. Well, on behalf of the women in the conversation room, you are blessed among women. Thank you. <laughs> and I can I say that, that I'm enjoying oh, I'm also Catholic. I really? think it's allowed. Okay. <laughs> I'm already enjoying myself. Oh. Okay, <laughs> Thank good. you for joining us. Sometimes when we invite the men to come in, they're like, mm, women, surrounded by women, and everyone is asking me questions. You know, I, I'm not sure if I can handle it. But today we want to talk about illegal migration. Maybe you want to help us with some definitions, because I know this is um, your field of expertise. Well, first of all, when we talk about uh, illegal migration, what that means is that there is a one called legal migration. And uh, in migration, it is everybody's right to migrate from one point to the other. the other. It could be within a country, moving from one rural community to the city. It's allowed. When you migrate from a country to another country, it is also allowed. Even biblically, migration is something that had been with us. If you are somebody who has been reading the Bible and all that, you will know that migration is not something that started today. So it is anybody's right to move from one place to the other. Okay. But what is happening now is that people now move from one point to the other for the wrong reasons. And because they are moving for the wrong reasons, that is where illegal migration has come in. Because before you move from your country to another, you must possess your travel documents. Now, what are those travel documents? You'll be talking about your international passports. You'll be talking about a visa to be able to take you into a different country that is not yours. Mm. But what we have today is that people are desperate. I know. To move from one country to the other in the name of looking for the greener pastures. Pasture. And that makes them now move to countries that are not theirs illegally. And that is where illegal migration comes, comes in. in. All right, we have a short drama skit that we're going to watch about illegal migration, which I think is going to be a food for thought and will set the conversation for the rest of the program. The, well, this is Conversation here on NTA. We'll be right back after this. I told you. Hey, no more. You never listened to me. You promised me heaven and earth. I told you that does not matter to me. No call, no messages from you. Your mother is lonely. You know, you are all I deserve since your father left us. This is four years now that you travel with your friends to Bodoimbo to bring for us good things. No call from you. Even your friends come home, they even travel and come home and even call their parents. But you, no message, no call. They even attend Igwe Festival. What have I done to you? Eh? Your mother is lonely. Your mother is lonely. Good afternoon, Mama. Good afternoon. How are you? Are you my son? Some things for you. You are still crying? Oh, Mama. I've told you not to. We are here for you. Look at me, I'm here for you. Shouldn't be doing this. Yes, I know. But where is Ehinomo? You travel with him, but you came back. Uh, 
true, your mama. That is true. I actually traveled with him. We went together. What? What? What is it that you don't want to tell me? Hold on. That you don't want to tell me. Tell me. What is it? Is my son dead? Oh, in more people have killed me. Oh, Salo Boa. Mama. What is it? He never got to Europe. Eh? Eh? He died in the desert. Eh? He couldn't. My son? Oh, he must say no boy. He bought people has killed my Mama, son. Please. Oh. Hey. Stop this. Hey. Hey. Mama. Hey. Mama. 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 Please wake up. Okay, so that obviously didn't end too well, but the purpose of this conversation is not to strike the fear of God into anybody who wants to travel. <laughs> You're not all going to die, and there is there are people who have taken risks, even bad risks, that have paid off. What we are saying is you need to think on your feet and not be nearly so desperate, right? Yeah. Because it's not all sunshine and roses over there. Yeah. Now, uh, I remember that you said something about the reason it's illegal migration is because people travel to go and do the wrong thing. What about people who obtain legal documents and still do the wrong thing? Purposely, they get legal documents, everything is in order, but they're leaving Nigeria. So they can go and be a prostitute where nobody knows that I'm a prostitute, you know, and then come home with all this money and everything. Although most of the time, people who leave illegally are more likely to, you know, go undercover and go and do some of these things. I was just thinking, what's the correlation between getting legal papers, legal papers, and then what your intention is when you get over there? No, what I was actually saying is not going there to do the wrong things. I'm talking about trying to migrate the wrong for way. wrong reasons. For wrong reasons, okay. 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 Yeah, okay, okay. That's the point I'm Migration was to... for wrong reasons, mm -hmm. not to go and do the wrong no, thing. No, 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 no. Clarify. Yeah. What I mean by that, when you talk about to migrate to do the wrong things, what that means is that you are leaving the shores of your country to another country with the purpose to go and do something that is not even within the law. Hmm. But when you are talking about traveling for wrong reasons, one, you are in Nigeria. Just because there are some challenges now, you now think that the grass over there is it's greener. greener. You think that when people go out there, they plug money <laughs> on the streets. What that means is that you are seeing that place as a place where you can pluck money from the trees but that is not the that's not the situation mm -hmm. now you are going there not because you really want to go and find something useful to do but you are going there with wrong impression of what you will see there you are going there with a wrong impression of what is likely to be to happen there but you and i also know that when we are talking about illegal migration there are so many things and it's also important that we look at illegal migration in various perspectives. There is, there are those who migrate to places to places without papers. Yep. Which brings me to the local migration. migration. Faith, what, what do you think of uh, all the rural urban? Because that's a serious issue in Nigeria. Yes. Because each time you look at these paperwork, I think they say is it uh, the ratio is seventy thirty. 
with the larger majority of Nigerians being rural dwellers. Okay. And most of them don't want to continue in that circumstance where you mm -hmm. don't have electricity, you don't have basic water, water, basic amenities. So you have quite a large number of particularly young people mm -hmm. migrating from our rural areas to the cities and you don't need paperwork for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you actually need paperwork to move from one part of Nigeria to the so next? I don't, you, you don't. You don't. It's yeah. just to widen your own beliefs. Okay. You've seen, okay, you have a neighbor, he went to the city, he came back driving a car. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. don't know what he's doing there, but because he came back driving a car, you feel you want to go to also and drive a car. Yeah. That's the mentality. the mentality we youth actually think right now. We feel since he went there and got a car, why can't I go and get a car? Then you get to the city, the first thing you see are big houses, big, ha big house, yeah. wider streets, and then you get confused. You don't know what to do. Yeah. The first person you meet once you come to the city is the, what they call them, um, Agbeo right yeah you meet them and they introduce you to things that you're not even supposed to do you you wouldn't actually meet the right people except you have someone who you're actually going to meet to introduce you to businesses maybe you sell, right buy and sell yes. in the market yeah. yes so yeah. it's actually very difficult and so mm. with, but nikki what do you think Is that, I mean, well i, I, I wouldn't want to live out the rest of my life in the village <laughs> no i wouldn't i wouldn't I, I wanted to ask him if i happen to find myself in Ghana and plant myself there. Is that does that qualify as illegal migration? No no if you leave Nigeria properly with all your because travel it's, work, it's ECOWAS now so I yes, can go with, and settle yeah, but even, even at that do you have the ECOWAS passports? Is it valid? Is it valid? Hmm. Remember if every passport that you have also has an expiry date. Okay. Now if you leave here and move to the next ECOWAS country. What that means is that you must have your valid passport. Yes, if you don't have it, first of all, you are there illegally. Okay. Even at that, it's not as if you just enter that country, you begin to work. You must also seek permit to work in such a place. Yes. Where you yes. don't have it, you are also working there illegally. Okay? So, if you move from any country to the other and your passport or your document including visa has already expired you are also living there illegally you have also become an illegal or irregular migrant yes in such a place and you don't have any reason to continue to be there that's why you see some of our people when they travel and their papers have expired they begin to run from one city to, to the other. Yes. And in that, they run into all manner of dangerous situations. That's also where you get people who change from what we call smuggled migrants to a traffic victim. How? You have moved out of your country to a country where you don't have papers to be in. All of a sudden, you now discover that your papers have expired. You do not have permit to remain there. And what do you do? You now run into problems. The next thing is that you run into the hands of criminal gangs who are traffickers themselves. And they hold you and begin to tell you, this is what we need to do for you. Okay. And that is where you have now become a victim of trafficking what now when that happens whatever they tell you that is what you will not do because you believe that they also protect you but even apart from that i understand that there's this uh, mafia like kind of setup syndicates. we have right syndicates that mm -hmm. we have right here in nigeria that run around harvesting particularly young women with promises of taking them okay. outside the country where they can go and work as nannies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they can go and work as nannies or so domestic nice. help mm -hmm. you're going yes. to get paid in pounds mm -hmm. and dollars and you know uh, over there that it's very hard to get nanny and all these things if you're willing to accept just a little lower than the other people you make a lot you of money, a lot of money. and then you go there and then you discover that Different sadly story. enough you're now part of a sex slave yes 
gang yeah, yeah. where you know you have to yeah you have yeah. to sell your body to to bring returns mm -hmm. because they are now holding your international passport and if you don't bring so much money you cannot ransom your passport so that you can leave the country and i mean it's really sad but I do understand that there is such a thing and it's a thriving concern right here in Nigeria. It is, it is happening not only in Nigeria. It is happening also in many countries, especially the developing countries. Wow. Okay? Because somebody capitalizes on the poverty around you. Somebody capitalizes on your own ignorance and begins to tell you that this other place is better than where you are. Mm. It also happens even the within the country. Somebody capitalizes on your poverty in your village and tells you, I want to take you to Lagos. I want to take you to Abuja, where you begin to, to work or take you to school, where you, you will have a good quality education. I will sponsor you. I will get you a job. This is the same promise they give to those who they take abroad. abroad. And, and you get there. If you are lucky, you go by air. <laughs> if you are not lucky... I like the way you put that. <laughs> oh, I like yeah. the way you put that because there was, there was a whole bunch of Nigerians trekking through the Sahara oh, Desert. Sure. Right, right now, oh, sure. Yeah, and breathing and the many, oceans and everything. And many of them have died along the Sahara Desert. Many have died on the sea now when you are lucky to even get to the place if you are a lady the first thing you see is somebody welcomes you very well mm. and skimpy for the, clothes for the first two days yeah they may not yeah. even give you the first two days because some of them may have promised some customers that we have new fresh, fresh consignments <laughs> coming and the customers are waiting they want this fresh blood from africa you know, and you, you come, they give you skimpy clothes and tell you this is a social person, mm. he will put you through. And the, because the person has been there, he's already an old hand. 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 <laughs> he tells you how it is done and blah, blah, blah. And you'll be shocked that maybe that night they will tell you it's time to work. Hmm. I'm interested in when you talked about a trafficked victim. Um, I'm a mom. I also work. Mm -hmm. um, would you categorize the Kutonu girls? I don't know how else, the girls are coming from Benin Republic to work in Lagos because I lived in Lagos for a bit. Are they tra trafficked victims? In the case where the mother of the girl herself, I said, okay, go to Lagos and work. Will I be wrong for employing that, wrong, that young lady? First of all, this lady you are talking about, does she have any travel documents? Hmm. Okay. That is one. Okay. Because most of these people you are talking about, what do they do? They go to Kotonu. They begin to harvest these girls or boys. And then bring them to Nigeria. Begins to begin to go to from one house to the other or one shop or the other. Begins to hand, hand over some of these girls or boys to them. Negotiates for the pay of those people. Some of these people, they go to Kotonu and some of these West African countries begin to harvest some young people with the promise that they are going to Nigeria to give them a job. And you know Nigeria, to some of these countries, is like what the US, uh, parts of Europe, are to many Nigerians. As Nigerians are looking up to those countries to go to, some of these countries are looking up to Nigeria as a destination. Hmm. Now, when they come into a place like Lagos, they are distributing these children to various households, to various shops, and they are negotiating for their salaries, including the money they used for transportation. Now, these children are underaged in most cases. And the madam or the man who has taken these children now abuse them use them for various form of child labor no pay because he has paid somebody okay. the person has collected the money and is gone now you have seen a slave in your hands and you begin to enslave this person 
and it's very painful. When the law level. enforcement agencies or officers come to your doorstep, yes, you will go in for it. So why do I have to? Why am I being embarrassed socially? Why am I being arrested for trying to help someone, someone else? Who are you well, helping? Who are you helping? I'm trying to speak from the angle of the typical Lagos mother or Nigeria mother that needs a bit of help. I go to work. I need someone to help me with the children. So why am I the one being arrested? Why not why, the person that brought them in? Why are you? Public? Why will you not be arrested? If we arrest you, you help us Look, get to the person. person who handed the child over to you. Okay. Yes. Okay, I see you. And apart from that, you're well aware of that thing, there's something shady going on. You don't know who this person is. You don't know the parents. The person that brought them is not related to them. You definitely know there's something Somebody, shady going oh, on. Yes. Nigerians are smart. And you, are you, are you also know that you are not treating that child well. Okay. That child will not eat what your children are eating. Eat. Yeah. Okay. That child will not go to school. And she's, he or she is almost the same age so with your have, own children mm, you will okay. not send them when you are you're, you're buying clothes you will not buy for that child you will end up giving that child the ones that you have used and misused mm. so how I, I, I don't you I go to places anyway, people will know I've never understood the rationale behind arresting the madam no i totally I, I, get it you already you already you already part of the crime yeah especially when you're actually uh, abusing and marginalizing yes. that child it's if you're arrested i don't think you even have a right to complain mm -hmm. because you, you know I what you've done that. especially when you come to the female maids and house mm. girls i just want you to say some <laughs> you say <laughs> some that's for nika right now <laughs> 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 questions are you, you that. see some that when they remove their clothes you yes, see uh, iron oh yes. iron marks yeah oh, yes, it's painful okay, let me give you an example in naptiv where i work we we once arrested one big woman I won't mention where she worked. Okay. One big woman. We arrested her. What was her offense? She had a, a nine-year-old girl from Benin Republic who was her house help. Okay. Good. You, even if you are living with this girl, if you are treating this girl, you know, well, well people well. may not know mm -hmm. that such a thing is happening in your place. Not your but this woman, child. this child cooks for her at the age of nine at the age of nine, nine this two. this child does the laundry for her now one day the girl was ironing the clothes and burnt something and burnt the clothes and madam went ballistic and madam used the iron on her. used the iron no way ca yeah, no, she came home normal. she came home it's normal saw the clothes put back the iron on on the, you know plug the iron and where it was now hot she bought her, bought her not in one place. No, no, no. They move her clothes, bought her bum bum. A nine year old child. Yes, many other things. So neighbors saw it My God. and shouted for help. She took this child, went to hide her somewhere else. Unfortunately, she did not even take this child to, to a hospital. hospital. Mm -hmm. oh. So it was when Nabtiv arrested this woman. We even saw other injuries on this girl's head oh she had been using the heels of her, of her, her shoes shoe. to it's beat this girl eventually God. this woman was convicted some people are monsters mm. yes they are and you wouldn't know when you see them no but they're, they're in boardrooms with something like that now will you be talking about the person who brought her mm. to he, to her no. No. that's the kind of thing that we're experiencing so mothers have to be very careful because most of these things, it is our women. That's what it says. Yes. I mean, most of the, it is, is our about women, the women that are doing times. this. When you talk about men in some of these circumstances, you may talk about somebody who is trying to abuse, Molest. sexually, sexually yeah. abuse usually the girl. Trying. They usually, they usually do. Yes. They yes. usually do molest you know? these children. You know? I mean, but the women, the women, the type of wickedness, the type of wickedness, they, 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 they. they, they they, they, they expose these children to. It's unbelievable. And it's good you play women. Yeah. Yeah. How can I we help? There should be an How can we, as women, help? Is it by um, seeing these kind of things in our friends' houses and speaking up against it? Is it by seminars or conferences? How do we change the mindset? Because this evil madam thing, it's a, 
it's becoming stereotype in some, you know, in the house help and the evil madam. You know, what, what, what can we do at this stage to, to make things a bit better? For me, like my director general, Julie Donnelly, will always say, if you see something, say, say, say something. something. Don't be yeah. quiet. Most of us, most of us, both men and women, we, we are living in silence. You see a crime being committed, you keep quiet. And it's not we, your concern. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not your concern. concern. No, for the sake of peace. You know, mm, it's not my business. Even in traffic, when you see someone is being jumped with a gun to the, you just move your mm, car. It's not my business. And move on. Well, with the gun, I will definitely move on. <laughs> <laughs> You're scared. Hello. You're scared. <laughs> Hello <there. laughs> yeah. 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 But you see, the point is that the culture of fostering that we used to know, we should keep imbibing such. If I may jump in here, yes. you know, nowadays we've, um, we've borrowed so much of Western culture yeah. and values and everything. Mm. And then all of a sudden, your 10-year-old shouldn't wash dishes. It's child abuse. Yeah. That um, is wrong. Your, your, your seven-year-old cannot finish his meal and take the plate to the kitchen. It's mm. child abuse. Mm. The, we grew up in our culture. Mm -hmm. In our culture, children are given age-appropriate chores, chores. Yeah. so yeah. it's normal for children to work in African culture they mm. don't die of it it's when you give a child work that is way beyond their physical capacity sure. in my opinion sure. that it becomes abuse yes. however go to the average village watch five six year olds they are street smart mm -hmm. they, they are good to go sure. they can look after themselves and they are well integrated into the into the home. Mm -hmm. Everybody has something that they're doing. Yeah. They are capable. They take care of themselves well mm -hmm. compared to their five or six year old counterparts in town who Dollars. maybe are still feeding mm -hmm. Indomie and so it's it's annoying. Not sharp. I don't see anything wrong with age appropriate chores. Sure. sure. At this level, you should be able to do this and this. At this age, you should be able to do this. So that even if you bring that child from outside give the child age appropriate ch chores along with your children for instance i have a maid first of all my maid is an adult right or a house help she's an adult but she's well into her 20s hmm. she has sundays off she comes and goes you know she comes in the morning by six seven she's done she goes the only thing she doesn't eat in my house is what she ordinarily would not eat so if I prepare the kind of food that she's, ah, for instance, she says that she doesn't eat uh, beef. She will prepare indomie or whatever else works for her. But it's not because, oh, this meal is too special for you to mm -hmm, eat. No. Mm -hmm. She takes naps. Mm -hmm. She can watch the TV and things like that. Okay. Why? This is somebody I leave my house to and go to work. Of yeah. course. This lady can, I mean, she can use my toothbrush and swipe it around the to toilet bowl and, <laughs> and drop it for me. And yeah, she, you know, she can spit in my meal when serving it. I wouldn't know. Mm. Even if I cooked it, what's to stop her after I've left? Opening the dish, spitting inside it's because madame party. slapped her earlier today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I try to, to treat you as well as I can. Mm. So that even if you do me wrong in the end, I can just I can satisfy my conscience that I treated you well. That's yeah. right. You are just a bad person. That's yeah. right. Yes. Not that I'll now be beating myself up. Hey, maybe if I hadn't done this to her, she wouldn't have done this to me and so on and so forth. This is a human being. Yeah. By what fluke of fate is it not me in her place? Yeah. Why am I not the maid and she my madam? Mm. It's just God. Yes. So why do you bring somebody into your circumstance and then begin to treat them like a slave if i bring a young girl from the village today if my children are watching tv she watch tv if they are doing chores she will do chores nobody will get treated special if i'm buying them christmas clothes i'll buy oh, for yeah. you yeah. Oh, yeah. i'll send you to school that's what i believe mm -hmm. you know why I, do, I don't believe connection is by blood mm. yeah. sure. if you bring sure. this child from the village and you treat the child you'll be shocked maybe it's this child that will treat you even better than your own biological that's child correct. 20, 30 years from now, mm -hmm. because that child will look back and say, hey, if this not. auntie treated me well when other people were bringing people from the village and treating them mm. like slaves. Yeah. You never can tell. Yeah. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. So why will you bring somebody into your home and then begin to, well, what's that? Lord over them. I don't believe in that. Uh, Mr. Josiah, I, I, I would like you to tell us about some of the efforts NAPTIP is doing. Are, are you talking to the youth more or are you talking to the people on the streets more? What are the efforts right now um, about illegal migration? How are you trying to curb it as an agency? 
you know, um, as an agency, we have what we call the four prong approach. Okay, four. It, yes. Okay. We talk about prevention. Okay. We talk about uh, protection, prosecution, and partnership. Okay. Because this crime is one that we need everybody on board. We can't do it alone as an agency. So each and every one of us must do something. And in dealing with all of this, we also have what we call whole of government and whole of society. Okay. Whole of government means every part of government, federal, state, or local government must play a role. Okay. Talk about whole of society, everybody must do something. And awareness creation is key to what we are doing. And we take this awareness creation to schools, to worship centers, to the rural community where most of these victims come from. Okay. We take this into those places. We even have clubs in the schools. We have... What are they called? We call them at the primary and secondary school, we call them anti-trafficking brigades. Oh, okay. At the tertiary Definitely. institutions, we have them as anti-trafficking vanguards. Okay. Okay? So, we use all of this to do some of these campaigns. Even in rural communities, many rural communities that we go to, what we do is that after campaigning, holding uh, meetings with the community leaders, talking to the community people at a rally, maybe in their village square, we also have what we call advocate groups okay. so that they can also help us when we have left the place. So are the advocate, is that where the partnership comes in? Are those the people you partner yeah, with? Yeah, that's part of partnership. I was say, who do you partner with? It's definitely not the no. madam because the madam is... No, 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 no. that one is a criminal. <laughs> that, one is a, that one is a criminal. <laughs> no, the partnership, when we talk about partnership, yes. we are talking about various organizations that we know should play one role or the other. We talk about even the media. Okay. Women organizations. The, um, the UN organizations. Foreign organizations. We partner with them because it's not just a Nigerian matter. It's an international it's an matter. International we call matter. it human trafficking on its own, which is part of illegal migration, is what we call the modern day slavery. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what is happening now is modern day slavery, whether we like it or whether not. Whether we like it or not, but it's true. An interesting point is this. How are they able to source these legal documents? Is there some kind of... Um, how do they obtain these illegal documents? Who is responsible for getting for the legal documents across to Let's these give people a that to need them? Let's think through all that about illegal documents because I know that you yeah. have some, some good stuff that you're going to tell it, us. It would we'll be take, nice to know how yeah. they're able to get these. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. Yeah. Conversations here on NCA talking about illegal migration and we'll be right back after this. When there's a child out there that's not getting the same that your own child is getting, the difference will tell and there will come a time in the society where that child is going to take its pound of flesh. Where you can actually, everything from watching a, a program with the child, you can start up the conversation from something on the TV and yeah. say, oh, you know. <laughs> for, yeah, me, for me, it's like, hurry up with this business. Mm. And you know one said, and see, it's not about me, it's about the guys, they're it's not ready to marry. Yes. If she wants to ask something, no, I know my mother very well. <laughs> In fact, the most interesting one is when I put up pictures on WhatsApp, you know, Snapchat filters and all that, she will call me, mm -hmm. remove that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was a thing, I got tired of all that and I said... You're in the conversation room here on NCA. We're talking about illegal migration and our 
expert in the house, Mr. Josiah, <laughs> has been giving us lots of insight. We've th been throwing a lot of questions his way. You are going to tell us about uh, illegal documents and how people are even able to, to get, get their hands on it. Yeah. Well, the, what I will tell you about that is that um, right now, it's quite difficult to get illegal documents because of what the Nigerian Immigration Service has done. The issue of illegal documents, because of the system of procuring um, passports A now, passport. it's quite difficult for you to have a document today and tomorrow you are coming up with a different document with your same name or whatever because of the biometrics. Okay. So it's okay. quite difficult right now. And that's why even when you are traveling, they swipe your passport to know whether it is legal or illegal. And I don't think that anybody wants to be caught with a passport that is already uh, not genuine okay. in a place right now. But what if my passport so, gets stolen? If your passport gets stolen, you will go back to immigration service where you go through some procedures and they will give you a new one, but you cannot change your name. You can't change your biometrics. But that is Nigeria Immigration Service. But the fact remains that most of these people who are traveling now, I do not know how many of them still travel with illegal documents. They go and procure appropriate documents. Now, they get visas too, especially those who travel through the right entry points or exit points. Because when they go there, they will check, up, they will check out all, the, all of those things. But the fact now is that when people go to certain places, those documents, they will expire. Your visa, maybe you are given a visa for two months. And then you overstay your welcome. And you overstay your welcome in such a place. You go underground. That has made you that has made you an irregular or illegal migra migrant at that moment because you don't have any right to remain there. Good. So this sort of brings us back to the initial question I asked where I said is it about the paperwork or about the intent in intent behind it? And now we are realizing that the fact is most of them are traveling with proper, proper and valid papers. documentation. Especially that that those especially those who are traveling through the normal routes. and proper route, yes. Yeah. And then they get there and then, okay, my visa has expired, mm -hmm. but I really don't feel like coming back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I'll just slip through the cracks and uh, try Hopefully. and live an illegal life. And then that's where you... That's where you run into the You run into hands. trouble and all kinds of things. Yes. yes. I know uh, your day-to-day, -day, I can't even imagine what it's like to be in the office every day. You must hear horrible stories of what... Um, old and young people go through trying to cross these channels the sahara desert through the seas maybe you could tell us some of them because there's some youth watching conversation right now and saying no it's not that bad i can i'm that one person that will make it you know when you have that feeling that of course i'll be the do. lucky one that'll cross over maybe you can share you some see, of those i stories. said here earlier that migration itself there's nothing wrong in it mm -hmm. is everybody's right to migrate to wherever you want to migrate to so long as you are doing it appropriately but what we have discovered is that every Nigerian youth is thinking about how to leave this country, go abroad, where you are going to make a lot of money. But does it work that way? It doesn't work that it's way. not as easy as it Because looks. there is no free lunch abroad. Here in Nigeria, somebody could wake up and take all of us to lunch and pay. But out there, when somebody calls you, let's go for lunch, you're your own. When we get there, I'm the one taking you, or who invited you, I will pay mine. You, you pay must it. pay yours. Of yeah. course. Go no. You must pay yours. <laughs> this is bringing me to this, this thing I wanted to ask. Now, you travel quite okay. You go over there, maybe you even make it. And then you start sending money back home. The truth is, it's not everybody that travels mm. that doesn't make it. Mm -hmm. Some do make it. Mm -hmm. And maybe they become the poster boy for, for other people who... Yeah, because yeah. I know one person who traveled illegally like that and he's doing pretty well in Canada. 
Mm -hmm. And I happen to know his uh, dear Igbo brother who is also trying to... He went through the Sahara Desert route and everything and everything. And he's in Canada and he's really doing good for himself. Yeah, he keeps sending cars home for sale and all that. That must be one in the... Uh, amongst many. Yeah, yeah, that's not the norm. Yes. But every now and then you stumble upon one or two of such su success stories. Yes. But don't you think that... You see, this mentality of grass greener... Yeah. Is, it's a human thing. It's a human phenomenon. Mm -hmm. That's why people cheat even in marriage. Mm -hmm. You're married and then all of a sudden, oh, Emeka is such a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. He's the person I should have married and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the grass is greener, mm -hmm. there are very few people running to Nigeria. Oh. Of course. That's mm -hmm. the truth. You have got to know I want a year, mm -hmm. but the truth is most people don't want to run to Nigeria. Does that not speak to the fact that there is something wrong? Even those of us that are running away from Nigeria, we're not just running away because we're irresponsible and we don't want to sit in one place and we don't love our country. There has been a failure. There's a systemic failure, in but, my opinion. But, see, let me tell you one thing. What you should understand is that as people are leaving Nigeria, people are also coming, coming into Nigeria. Yeah. There are not many. No, no, no. Some people are coming home. No, no, no. Don't say there are not many. Don't say there are not many. There are many people who are also coming into Nigeria from our neighboring countries who have seen Nigeria, like I said earlier, Kotonu, as, the, as the America that we are seeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Okay. You understand. But, you see, but let me tell you one thing. Let uh, me tell you one thing. <laughs> because she asked before concerning the stories, yes. those gory stories, you know, that our people go through. Because I will come back to what you are saying. Yes. But you see, it's important that our people know that the grass is not as greener as they are thinking out there. One, our people go there and live a life of misery. You have left your comfort zone to a place where you are not sure, to a place where you are going to be enslaved by one madam for maybe five, six, seven years, who has made you to sign a paper to say, I'm owing you 60,000 euro. I'm owing you 70,000 euro okay. for bringing me here. And how do I my pay? I'm now doing your bidding. What is that bidding? I must engage in forced prostitution. I must engage in one form of forced labor or the other. Yeah, that, yeah. And every day, the lady is on the streets prostituting. Every day, the person doesn't know when the sun is shining. You don't know when it is raining. You don't know when the, sun, when the snow is there. The point is that you are being pushed to go and do this job. The important thing is that the madam has said you must come home with so so amount of money every day because as you are coming, they are marking off how much have you paid. You are not... The slavery you are going through, I'm talking to the youths, the slavery you are going through, not for yourself, Somebody is collecting this money. For goodness sake, if somebody knows I'm going to do prostitution abroad and you are going out of your own volition and you are making this money and you're keeping it to yourself, why do I bother too much? Mm. But we are talking about the slavery, the exploitation that has come with it. With it yeah. Now, many of these people do not live to tell this story. Many of them are killed by some of the gangs, some of the people who are even taking them for the prostitution. I've heard now that uh, there's also organ harvesting going on. Of course, that is the main thing. Yeah. That is one big thing that is going on now. And it's it mostly happening among now. the youths. Yes, that is because the because it has in to be Africa young, as a whole, you have about 214 million people, a research I read about, 214 million Africans that travel, and more than half of them are youths. Mm. I personally, I am a young person. If I get the opportunity to travel abroad, I will take it to the jump. I won't waste time. Why? Because we feel we don't, we're not really being used here in our own country. You see government, for example, what are the people there? They are mostly the older people. And we will go to school. They'll tell us go to school. We have but we're the, the, the key. The key. I we're not Sorry, so the key to, to things like that. Um, the future yeah. is education. Now mm. you've gone to school, you're out, yeah. and the doors are being the keys to the doors are changed. Yeah, you can't, even get, you can't even get a I job. Know. I know. There are a lot of young people here that actually want to make an impact. 
They go out there, they are good doctors, good lawyers. Even if they use illegal means, there are some of them go through illegal means. The when they are there, they actually get their, their proper documents. They can actually do it there, I think. Can they actually do it there? Uh, well, it depends on the well, it, it depends it, on it, maybe it, if you get asylum or something. Yes. Yeah, there are also uh, some that actually seek um, fake asylum with fake um, yeah, reasons. Yeah, you know, you know, and also use gorgeous marriages you, you, you to actually know, get our, them. You, yes. know, you know our people, yes. at times, at times, people run, I'm from Imo State. Hmm. Somebody goes to the UK and begins to claim that he's seeking asylum because that this Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria yeah. is what and the has, Westerners is love what, is what, is what, what you know that it affected his father and mother in a worry uh -huh. okay <laughs> and they were all killed their yeah. houses burnt yeah. this that 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 yeah. somebody in no worry he's talking about Boko Haram in no worry mm. and then because of that he's seeking asylum in, in such a UK. place yeah you know that is why these days we also work in partnership with some of these foreign countries foreign, okay in you fact, let me tell you a funny yes. Well, I don't know if it's a funny story. I know of a lady who sought asylum based on her sexuality mm. because she's a lesbian. This lady is married with kids. Mm. But all of a sudden, she did a whole country. All of a sudden, she became a lesbian who's been persecuted in Nigeria. And you know our laws now. Mm. Yes. The anti-gay marriage thing. Yes. Ah, Nigeria. If she comes back to Nigeria, they will lock mm -hmm. her up. Mm -hmm. Hey, she's a lesbian. Oh, how can she do? They gave her citizenship. Oh. Look, look at See, that. that's painful. Although look she also went, she went of, legally anyway. She yes, I also legally. heard of one. It's an elderly man, like very matured. You see, you'll see him for sure. And he actually claimed he was 19 years old. And they agreed. The whole search of the thing was like really stressful. But finally, finally, they actually agreed because why was it the seeking asylum <laughs> in the mind? See? But it is important that the youths don't get discouraged. But we have people that give us misguided thoughts. Yeah, they may give you. But you see... All the things you see on social media. You see, yes. the, 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 point, the point here is, with all that you have gone through, you've gone to school, okay? Your parents have suffered to get you to the point where you are. Why would you also give in to somebody to now go and exploit you? Why will you, be, why, will you, why will you give in to a journey that you are not sure you will return alive? We are talking about organ harvesting yeah, a while ago, scary. which that's is the scary. new thing that is happening now. And yes. every day you hear about ritual killings, hmm. ritual killings here and there. And that's why my DG recently directed the officers in investigation that anywhere we hear about this issue of ritual killing, apart from what other law enforcement agencies are doing, doing. investigating that is ritual killing, we must go in. To be sure that this is actually ritual killing because in the true sense of it most of these people things may not be ritual killing most of these people may just be that somebody has taken somebody somewhere and with experts harvested organs where the organs are harvested because tell me why would you Maybe. see a cop somewhere and you now discover that the heart is gone it takes an expert to do it yes it doesn't sure. take any ritual. Does the ritual is actually know which one is which? <laughs> in most cases, you know. So we we must begin to look at some of these things, and that's why we must continue to be our brother's keeper. But for the youths, yeah. you don't need to be discouraged. Many people too who are in authority today, they were also once youths, but they have also gone through their own phase. Phase. But don't be discouraged, my dear. Don't be discouraged because we continue to pray and work hard that our country be, continues to develop properly. Yeah. And I think we'll get there. Yeah. Let nobody be discouraged. You know, it's, okay. a, it's a passing phase. I think they should have an educational something for we, the youth. Because I know I have friends. I have friends that actually, as I said earlier, if they see the opportunity, they'll jump at it. I think apart from just the education, I should give them something doing. You come up, like when I was in high school, before we were about to graduate, mm. they came to us, Monash University. They came to my school and they're like, okay, the best students will get this kind of scholarship or something like that. Why don't they come to the universities, companies, come to the universities and pitch the student? This is our company, this is this. And again, check the records of such 
students, own all the students, and then allow the students also pitch to them what they can offer mm -hmm. and that's take it up from idea. there. Yeah. That's then a good idea. Just allowing them hustle for job, carrying far here, and then you tell someone that you need experience of 15 years. How? Yeah. Where? When? <laughs> Well, that one, that one is there, no doubt about that. Yes. Is there, no doubt about that. But my own is, look before you leap. Many people have gone in search for that greener pasture. And let no one allow him or herself to be the victim. Because many people that have gone out, many of these youths, I do not know how many of them were able to reach this nation. True. Neither do I know how many of them will return alive. Yes. We have seen many of these people because, like the story I was saying earlier, you discover that somebody is even getting to the point of completing the payment or the debt they, they put on her. Yes. Okay. And you discover that what is in her mind at that time is, oh, very soon I will have my freedom. Mm -hmm. Then I will now begin to recruit people. Yes. people. Yes. You now discover too that some of those women, when they look at you and look at you and discover that, okay, you will now come into competition with us. with us. When you finish, what will they do? They push you out to security. Yes. And you are arrested. Oh, when you are wow. arrested, before you know it, you are brought back home as a deportee. Wow. Some I come in home here with lots of health issues. Of course. HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. hepatitis B, and name it. Mm -hmm. Some of them come in here with pregnancy without knowing who was involved. Wow. And at that point, when their pregnancy is there and they can't do anything to it, you have become a liability. What do they do? They push you out. They push you out. Yeah. And you get yourself back home here. Because who wants to... Which man wants to sleep with a, a young girl that is pregnant? Hmm. That's what they do. Because you also have become a liability both to the madam and whoever that they are sending you to. So there are lots of problems. Lots of problems in all of this. So, when you look at some of these, you ask yourself, is it worth it? It's not worth it, my dear. Yeah. Yes. It's not worth it. Yeah. And also, some of we youths are actually naive. So, I think parents also should play a role in helping to stop this illegal Im yeah. illegal migration w work in um, changing the mindset of yes. the way our youth think. If my yeah. like my own that. case, if my mom wasn't educated, she would have allowed her children because a man, they work in the same company. He came to her and told her, ah, look at your beautiful girls. Give me, let me take them with my yeah, children to go abroad. And my mother said no. no. Till after 10 years, before my mom heard that this man has been arrested. Why? Mm. He was trafficking people. Women. Yeah. Children. Yeah. One children. that even happened, this, this one that was a story shared on Facebook. Uh -huh. He told the story himself of how, you know, he was just a reckless youth. I think he had finished secondary school. 17 or 18 at this point in life when you're feeling like uh, the god of thunder mm. or you're feeling like which one hawk nothing can do me yes just like that the chinese you know this real thing it's the chinese that have been handling it in nigeria mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. and uh, they were recruiting for laborers in another part of the country and he was like mm, why not you know and yeah. he didn't even bother to go home and pack a few things into just a small polythene bag yeah. he just hopped on the train and yeah, went with them to god knows where and well to god be the glory truly it was work but according to him they could never do anything to the satisfaction of the chinese mm -hmm. you know they would come out ah is this what you did ah it's not okay then they won't pay them for that day mm. oh wow so no money no food nothing he said he endured this thing for like a month and he was like wait <laughs> Even in the Bible, so who was the, the prodigal son? <laughs> yes, yes. That should be that one came back. Yes, and yes. his father, yes, <laughs> that's, and he, he traced his, his way back home. He just quietly, he begged people for money here and there, fa hopped on the next available train back to Benue State, and his mother was weeping with joy when she oh, saw him because wow. she had almost that's run mad, story. thinking that he had died. Or, oh, wow. And this is a Nigerian situation. Yes. yes. And you know the new trend now? Some so-called recruitment agencies are all over the country. Yeah, there's so many In the name online. of recruiting yes. Nigerians yes. Yes. to yes. go and work, and work in Saudi Arabia. Especially some, Dubai. Dubai. Yes. Thank you. Go I and work to some of these Asian countries yes. and all that, that they have job opportunities for them. Yeah. And the question is, these people you are recruited, recruiting them in, in their thousands. In their thousands. So, which country is ready to receive all of these people? So, these are things that we are also looking at to know these people 
where are they which countries are these going to? going to what are they going there for okay. and the searchlight of security organizations are on these people yeah. right now and why i'm saying this is the youth must be watchful they must be watchful it's not every opportunity that comes that is a good opportunity True. we have yeah. had an opportunity a, a problem a, a, an issue before in lagos somebody woke up one day and said that he has a license from canada to recruit thousands of people professionals from nigeria to canada and before you know it this man has already collected not less than 12,500 nigerians who he was charging 150 per person that's good money to take that's them to canada 150,000. yes right? but you know the funny thing nigerians were falling all over themselves all over themselves some people were paying up to 2.5 million to be to be to be, first, to to be, be the, among to go, the first yeah. people wow yeah. and yeah. by the time we got this information in naptip in lagos the guy had and went money. into that investigation the guy had gone, He'd gone. Spanish, and we went imagine. into his office with court order to go into the office we went in there and we saw these passports of people stacked into big big cartons in My the place goodness. and people were gathering in the place because they have been told we will travel on social day uh. they will travel on social day no single visa was in any of those people uh, those wow. things Mr. but the list was one one hundred fifty thousand. My goodness Mr. Josiah, thank you for coming in to the conversation room and enlightening us on uh, illegal migration. It's been really good having you here with us. Our thank social so media <laughs> uh, platforms are still available. Uh, they're up on the screen for you. We'd like to hear from you. You might have a personal story that you would like to share with uh, Faith and Devan and myself about illegal migration. Our Facebook handles, our Instagram handle, and our Twitter, it's there on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. My name is Nikkei. I'll be signing off and I'll leave my ladies to do that as well and faith goodbye I'm Deva mom and please I'm not saying all Chinese are bad I'm just <laughs> yeah. talking about a particular incident please so all right Mr. Josiah you say goodbye too all right thank you so much I'm Josiah I've enjoyed my stay here today right. thank, thank you. you so much and see you again soon in the conversation room Good morning, sir. <laughs> you are here already? No. Now my spirit day, my body day for house. What kind of question is that? Were well, you not the one that fixed this meeting for 8 a.m.? You are now coming by 10 a.m. And start asking me uh, uh, job question. Not bad, Chief, now. I'm sorry. Don't you also go late for meetings sometimes? You know now, African time. Thing. No more African time. And no more pancaking of face during office hours. At the end of the day, we will lose valuable time. We will not make progress. If we want to move this nation forward, we must treat business as business and respect time. Change begins with me. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Can we go for the meeting now, Chief? Better. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture.
Creation of art goes with our power of sensitive perception and intellectual understanding. Art requires training the eyes and ears to perceive and enjoy specific qualities and forms in art. Hello, welcome to Visual Impressions. My name is Diseye Ukbaka. Today on Visual Impressions, we'll be talking about textile and local craft. Textile comes in various ways and batik is one of such. It is well accepted in the world of fashion. So, um, basically what we do here is batik, which is wax resist technique of um, fabric decoration. We use uh, wax, it's, it comes in slabs like this, wax. Before we go on to resisting the plain fabric, as you can see here, it's either in colored or in white. The first thing we do is to sketch on paper with our pencil. After sketching on paper like we've done here, yeah, so um, from paper we transfer to soft cloth like this. Because if you work on paper continuously, it could tear. So to avoid it getting torn, we transfer it here with double-faced carbon paper. So what we do is we place the cloth there and we can use two fabrics or we fold the fabric into two and place the um, carbon between the fabric and then we place the design over it and trace with either used old biro or we use a pencil to trace, trace over the design. After doing that, then we break this wax and put in a pot, like you can see here now. Allow it to dissolve to liquid. When it dissolves to liquid, we now go on to cut our foam, to pencil foam. If you have a tip mouth like a pencil, and we use it over the cloth. As you can see here, I'm applying wax on the fabric. This is pure free hand method. For learners and beginners, that's the tracing method I showed to you earlier. You trace with carbon paper and then you go ahead. This one is pure free hand. So you don't need to go on to design anything again. Yes, this is the clam. The ocean clam, the body is very smooth. Like you have seen the seashells there. From the seashells you get your I get my motifs from the seashells actually because I'm actually interested in aquatic forms from the Niger Delta area. And for your repeat method, you have different repeat methods. This is OG repeat. You can see how it's coiling. It's OG repeat combined with simple pattern repeat. This is the complete work of what you saw me doing and it's going to be for a booboo. You can see that the neck is cut out. This is already designed according to how it's going to be sewn. It's going to be dipped in dye and then we'll use starch. What we use is your cassava starch in this form and then we mix, mix it to paste mix it to paste and then we add kerosene to it I've already added some kerosene to it that will help it to um, give the fabric a shine when it's ironed when it's dry and it's ironed you see it glittering. It's because we add kerosene to the starch before we 
eye on it. So that's the final finish. When we go out there to die, there are certain things we don't do indoors because of the fume and um, for safety reasons. So when this work will be sent to the dying section, it's very important to wear hand gloves. Hand gloves, the nasal mask, so that you don't inhale dust from the chemicals. But they are very dusty, they come in powdered form. We use hydrosulfite and caustic soda. And then we also use the dyes. They come in different colors. 